Yo, 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 what up, what up, my peoples? Thank you for joining us right here on Perspectives on the IMC TV podcast. It's your host, Primeval. This is a new show that we're bringing to you. And it's pretty much an analytical show analyzing African Nigerian world events from our perspective right here on IMC TV topic that we'll be dealing with today uh, is a vampire governor call for licensing of citizens for self-defense. Uh, Tinubu, Bola Tinubu, the APC presidential candidate and uh, chief justice of Nigeria, Tanko Mohammed resignation. Uh, we're going to start with the call by the Zamfara state governor, Matawali, for the licensing of citizens to self-defense. You know, um, for me, I think that is a, actually a righteous call, you know, because I don't believe in people sitting there waiting to die. You know, the terrorists, they are dealing with arms that they use for war. You know, I'm not even talking about AK-47. I'm talking about machine, submachine guns and those kind of things, heavy hammering. And, um, and these people, all they have is machetes and cutlasses and those kind of a cake weaponry that will not do anything for them. So the call by the governor of Zamfara State is actually in order. I know there have been people, there have been talk all over the Nigeria polity. All they're talking about, oh no, no, how bad it would be for the country and all of that. But we, we are not even looking now that the country is already dying, you know? And the, con the citizens have to be able to protect themselves one way or the other. We can't just sit down and let these people, these terrorists that are coming from outside Nigeria, come and kill the indigenous people of the land. You know, when the call was made in, I think it was sometime in 2019, by President Buhari, that um, the banning of weapons, that citizens should no longer be carrying weapons, I actually thought that was the biggest mistake he made. You know, either it was a mistake or he was being complicit in the genocide that is currently going on in Nigeria. Because um, I say he's been complicit because his administration have done nothing. I won't even say they have done little. They have done nothing to curtail the increasing violence in the land. You know, it's so bad now. People are being killed in the churches. You know, the case of Ondo State comes to mind where about 57 people were killed. You know what I'm saying? More than 80 something close to 100 people were injured. You know, this is just the statistics of what is happening on a daily basis. On the 26th of June, I'm not trying to divert from the, the topic at hand, but on the 26th of June in Northern Edo State, in precisely Aochi, uh, uh, Reverend Father Christopher Odia was kidnapped from his rectory while he was coming out to go and conduct on the Sunday mass. He was kidnapped and a few hours later he was dead. These people killed him. You know, we cannot as a nation continue like this. You know, so what the governor Zamfara state says is actually in order. Before I go further in this, I will let you listen to this video by General Irabor, the chief of army staff of the Nigeria Armed Forces of the Nigeria Army let you listen to it, his take and how he feels that it's not a good idea but i will let you listen to the video and i will speak afterwards after he, 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 what he after you watch what he has said there are members of the armed forces the police and other security agencies we call it have vigilantes in zamfara the basis for asking for citizens to bear arms um, I'm yet to know. I believe that um, the Attorney General of the Federation will look at the Constitution and what the laws say and what the powers of the executive governor is to be able to do this. But I believe that um, um, that, in my view, is not the right way to go. There are, of course, you know, actions that members of the security agencies, the armed forces in particular, the police and other security agencies that are doing in in um, 
uh, conducting in, in Zamfara State and environs. I believe that that should. Beyond that, of course, the other, you know, um, um, legal issues, other issues of governance, other issues that the governor, I believe, could have addressed using the instrumentality of the laws that are valuable for, you know, to bring greater peace and security. But like I said, um, I do not intend to, you know, say much about it. I believe that uh, the federal government, especially the, um, you know, using the attorney general to look at, you know, the details of that press release, uh, the, if you like, uh, the instruction, um, if what I read is is true, I do not also think that the the governor has the powers to instruct the, um, the, the commission of police to issue license because the commission of police does not have the powers to issue. Okay, you guys just saying welcome back. You just just saw, listened to what and saw what the general has said. He thinks it's not a good idea. But one thing I want to tell the general with all due respect, the Nigerian army cannot protect every one of its citizens. First of all, the, the, the job of the Nigerian army is to protect. It's not even domestic security. That's what we, we keep failing to see. Nigerian military is not supposed to be engaged in domestic security. You know, the Niger they're supposed to be domestic security security arms that take care of domestic security i mean we have them the nigerian police the civil defense the dss just to name a few they are there but again it seems like these people are not doing anything it, that's what i just get that a lot of the agencies and institutions in nigeria are not working but people because people are not doing their jobs people are not doing the need that's what i keep seeing in every problem that pops up in Nigeria, even with the people that have been kidnapped. And I mean, let me take the Kaduna Abuja rail track people that were kidnapped a few months back. Most of these people are still in captivity. So tell me, if the security agencies are doing their job, why are these people still in captivity for almost three months in the bush, right here in the territory, in the territory of Nigeria? You know what I mean? So. That just tells me people are not doing the job. The government doesn't seem to care too much, you know, because to fix a lot of the security issues in Nigeria, I don't think is that difficult. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I'm saying I'm not even a security expert, but looking at it from, with common sense, you know, a lot of the things we need to do is the implementation of new technology, you know, we need to implement new technology. We need to have a, a, a digital command center, you know, that that can power drones, that can power CCTV cameras. We need to have a few of these at different strategic locations across the country. So we are still not thinking on an advanced military, you know what I mean? So the moment we start thinking about advanced security and military and infrastructure then that's when our problem will go away because you have trailers convoys of people going bringing weapons into the country you know and they're going through the borders yeah we have porous borders but oftentimes these people are going through security checkpoints so again all of this comes back to complicity by our security agencies who have taken bribe, you know, who have been corrupted because a lot of these people, they are not patriotic citizens. They are just there. Everybody is trying to be rich. But one thing we all need to understand that we all cannot be Dangote. You know, we all cannot be the richest kid on the block. That's not going to happen. There have to be people to secure the place. There have to be people to do work, whatever different levels of work that needs to be done in a society. So everybody, this clamor for wealth by everybody is not going to work, you know? So we all need to look at it holistically and see where we fit in in the scheme of things in our nation and see how we can be of service to our nation. Our nation should come first. Because if we all put our nation first, Nigeria, nobody will want to leave that country. Everybody will be there because, you know, whatever you you find anywhere in the US or Europe or wherever else will be right there in Nigeria, you know?
the standard of living will be high. You understand what I mean? All of these issues goes back to the problems we have. You know, the structural foundation of problems. Even with what Governor Matawale is saying, calling for citizens to defend themselves, he should not even be calling for this, but I'm for sure he's calling for this out of frustration. When people were clamoring for state and local policing in their various states and localities, the presidency outrightly rejected it. You know, so if you are rejecting a, a, a solution that could have actually be the be the right solution, because I always I believe security is the grassroots, it's, it's a local issue. It's not something you take from the top down. It's something from the down up, you know, from bottom up. Let me put it that way. So it's a local issue. And the unwillingness of the political class in Nigeria to actually make provisions in the Constitution or actually throw away the 1999 Constitution and adopt a Constitution that is favorable to all regions, you know, it's actually one of the reasons we are going through the security issues we are going through right now. So again, I stand with Governor Matawale because he has not just said that oh, just give allow people to just be carrying guns without no database and no 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 structure and accountability. He's actually asking that mechanisms be put in place to make sure the people that are getting these weapons are licensed and there's a database to track them and to track their weapons that they are procuring. So again, the failure is at the hands of the government, you know, cause I mean, if they have not failed at all levels, they wouldn't even be complaining about giving citizens the right to defend themselves because you will have the database and you will have the structures in place to monitor, to make sure these weapons do not get in the wrong hands. Again, kudos to Governor Matawali and our different security agencies and our government. They need to start doing their job. Uh, we're going to go all down to our other news on we have. Uh, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Tanko Mohammed, resigned. Uh, this news is coming right on the heels of a, of a memo, internal memo. This is why he was termed by the other justices of the High Court of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. That it was an internal memo that was not supposed to leak out to the public but anyway it leaked out to the public and the, the letter highlighted the corruption you know and the decadence in the supreme court of nigeria headed by chief justice tanko muhammad uh, the letter was actually addressed to him um among the things cited in that letter was that there was that uh the supreme court most times do not have internet service you know there are no monies that are allocated for this to provide electricity in the complex those monies are not available justices their welfare have not been have not been taken care of have not they are not well they are not being addressed the right way you know you have justices that some of them don't even have vehicles they're taking public transportation to get to their to their their, their chambers you know, so which is bad, you know, the judiciary is supposed to be an equal part of government is the judiciary, the legislature and the executive, you know, so yet the legislative and the executive branch are actually spending the wealth of Nigeria while they are actually impoverishing the, the, the judiciary arm of government, you know, what does that do for the justice in Nigeria? That means justice is for sale. When the needs and the welfare of judiciary workers are not being taken care of, what do you think they would do? They would start selling justice to the highest bidder, you know, because nobody wants to suffer. Nobody wants to be poor. Everybody wants to be able to meet their basic needs, you know. So what I see is the system we have right now just keep fostering corruption, you know. Like Dr. Abati said, in, in I think it was today in their broadcast on Arise News, they said we keep repeating the same stupidity. We keep going in a circle of stupidity. I think that was the way he termed it. You know, and that's a, an apt description of what the political class are doing in Nigeria. You know, they keep doing the wrong things. They know what to do. They know the right things to do, but they are not willing to do it. 
their quick in laws and create in loopholes to be able to take advantage of the system. That's what I see that is going on in Nigeria. And the political class, they need to be more patriotic. You know, you cannot, you cannot be taken advantage of the system. You know, that's why nothing works in the country. You know, the allegation against Chief Justice Tanko is that he's spending money. He's, he's gallivanting all over the world with his family and all of that. But yet the justices are not being taken care of, you know. So he resigned a few days, I think the next day after this letter came out, sight and heal L. But we all know that that's not the reason that he resigned, you know. He, first of all, he was not even supposed to be the chief justice of Nigeria. If it's not because of the impunity that have been displayed by the current president of Nigeria, President Mohamed de Buhari, who has been doing things, whatever, whichever way he likes, you know what I'm saying, without actually following due process. If he had followed due process, I don't think Chief Justice Tanko Mohamed would have even been the Chief Justice of Nigeria. So this is a case of putting a square peg in a round hole. While we keep doing things like that, we will never make any progress, any meaningful progress. You know, this is the same judge on this tenure. You cannot even highlight anything significant that has been done under his tenure as the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Um, if anything, there are controversies, you know, because it was during his tenure that the ban on um, citizen carrying arms was actually put in place. He, he was one of those people and the Chief Justice uh, and the Attorney General of Nigeria. They were all part and parcel of that, you know, and um, the wearing a job in public spaces, he was part of that too, you know, all of that, you know, which actually has prompted a human rights activist slash lawyer, Mr. Omirobo, to actually come to court in his traditional local attire, you know, I mean, his traditional religion is a local, so he was dressed in his school regalia, you know, because he said um, the ruling of the court, you know, gives him that right to do that, you know, and he does give him the right to do it because what Nigerians keep forgetting is that Islam and Christianity is not the only religion in Nigeria. If anything, Islam and Christianity are actually foreign religions to Nigeria. The traditional Niger uh, religions are the indigenous religions, you know, but just because of the mindset of the people, you know, we are actually not even looking at our traditions anymore. We are actually ignoring and destroying our traditions for foreign traditions. No, but um, not to divert from the subject. The resignation of Tanko Mohammed, chief just former chief justice of Nigeria, is actually in order, you know. But he should not be allowed to go away scot free, you know. He should be investigated. Those um allegations made against him should be interrogated, you know for fact finding to make sure that people are not using the system for their own personal benefit. We need to start having accountability in our system. You know, we have to have accountability in the Nigeria political system. If we keep running it the way we are running it right now, it's not going to work. It's never going to work. You know, our children, our youth, you know, our family members will, will keep looking for a way to endanger their lives just to get out of the country. You know, right now you have cases that have been lingering in court for years. You know, it seems like the only cases that are moving in our courts, in our, in our justice system, are the political cases. That tells you something. You know, it tells me something that those are the only cases moving forward because those are where the money at, you know, nobody want to deal with cases, you know, that's not political cases. Those are money cases. The politicians are willing to pay. And when judges are not being taken care of, it's easy to bribe them. You know, when they see millions of dollars and see dollars money, they have not seen welfare allocation they have not seen in years when they see politicians bringing that of course they want to expedite those cases so we really need to
get to the root of our problem you know i'm happy about the new acting chief justice of nigeria olu kayo de Aruola. He's the new guy he's one of those justices that wrote that internal memo about the crisis and the decadence in the supreme court he needs to be a good administrator you know he needs to do the needful you know so that justice will not be perverted in our justice system you know he knows what the problems are because like i said he's one of the 14 justices that penned that letter it was the first signatory in that letter so i'm for sure he should have a plan so now the onus is on him to change the the apis court in nigeria for the better and hopefully with the welfare of the justices and the judicial offices being taken care of justice will actually be served you know um they need to be truly be an independent body. You know, they are an independent arm of government. They should not be controlled by the presidency or the legislative. You know, I'm saying this because we have the situation of Namdi Kanu, you know, the IPOB um, leader. While I'm not in support of anything Namdi Kanu says, I really think he should be given bail. You know, he shouldn't be locked up this long and wearing the same Fendi outfit for, for for months now. Every time he appears in court, he's wearing the same outfit. And I don't think I don't think that's right, you know. He should be giving bail, let him come to court from home. Just the way they had Sore, you know, where they had him on house arrest where he couldn't leave Abuja. Something like that I think should be given to Namdi Kanu. You know, so these justices uh, hopefully, Ulukayo de Ariwala, they will look into all of this matter because these matters are not matters for the presidency to tell or dictate what the justices should do. They should know what the law is. They should be able to tell the truth and do the right thing by the citizens of the country. You know, Namde Kanu, yeah, why he, he, his methods I don't approve, but what he's clamoring for is actually legitimate the people of the southeast are actually marginalized take it or leave it i mean the whole political process that's going on in nigeria right now is actually proof of that if anybody was doubting that the Igbos were marginalized i think the proof is right now in what's going on in the political system. but um we're going to leave that right there we, um, we hope that the new acting chief justice of nigeria will do the right thing and um, the government, the different agencies will do the right thing in general. Uh, we're going to go to um, the candidate, Chief uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Uh, as most people know, he's the former governor of Lagos State, Nigeria. And, um, but um, he has been, there's been a lot of controversy surrounding this dude. You know, um, he, a lot of people look at him as the, 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 the godfather of Lagos politics. You know, all the successive um, uh, previous governments and successive governor have to him. He has actually has a hand in making sure they come into power. You know, if you doubt his influence on Lagos politics, uh, the case of go former Governor Amber Day should actually be a clear example of how he controls the, the polity in Lagos. But uh, he's running for the presidency of Nigeria under the APC, the ruling party. And um, a lot of people are actually not feeling his candidacy because uh, this guy, he has a lot of integrity issues. You know, for one, his age has been a bone of contention. You know, this guy, I think, has reduced his age by at least 10 years. You know, he claims to be 70 years old, but um, his daughter, his eldest daughter is 62 years old which leave a, uh, an age difference of eight years, you know? <laughs> so a lot of people are like, this dude, you know, how are you lying like this? But uh, it's, it's real age, it's real birth year. It's actually, I think, in the profile of his daughter, you know, which shows that he, his age is about 10 years off, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that's one. And um, there, there, there's been a conviction against him by the U.S. government while it was a... Uh, residents in Chicago you know uh, he's um, 
assets were seized from him by the U.S. government as proceeds of um, drug sales. You know, these are all public records. You can actually see the public records on the screen as I'm talking. You know, these are all public records that are available in the U.S. court. You know, so this guy is pretty much you can call him a criminal. You know what I mean? Um, he's been controlling Lagos, like I said, controlling the politics. Um, he's known to be the biggest landlord in Lagos State, with over 500 billion naira in landed property. Um, his wife is a sitting senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. His daughter is the uh, lodger of Lagos, which is the mother of the market. Women, that's all these are uh, positions, revenue generating positions. His son controls the digital bi uh, billboard signage, you know, in Lagos State. So if you're trying to do any advertising on, um, on any digital signboard in Lagos State, you have to go to his son. And um, he's also known to have an interest in the Lekki Tollgate, you know, which was the scene of the NSAS killing, you know, a few years back when um, Nigeria protesters, peaceful protesters, were protesting at the toll gate singing a national anthem and uh, holding the flag and we're actually shot by the Nigerian military. Um, nobody has been nobody has been held accountable for those atrocities, you know. If anything, they have been trying to reopen the toll gate so they can continue generating their revenue. Uh, and a lot of people feel that he actually owns the toll gate. That's why they are so insensitive and are unwilling to let the probe of the killings go on and even conclude before thinking about opening up on the toll gate and uh, a lot of people don't even want the toll gate to reopen they just want it to be dismantled you know because again a lot of people feel these are actually revenue that are going to private pockets um specifically chief ahmed balatinibu's pocket uh, also there's a company, Alpha Beta. Um, Alpha Beta is a company which collect tax revenues for Lagos State government. And uh, the company would hold 10% of those proceeds. And it's known, you know, that Chief Bola Metinobu actually owns this Alpha Beta company or has interest in this company. For me, it just, it just I, I'm just baffled at how is it that a private consulting company is collecting taxes for state government when there's a ministry of uh, revenue, you know? So if there's a ministry of revenue, why is the ministry of revenue not doing their job? See, again, it goes back to impunity, you know, and lack of accountability in the system, you know? And I, 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 it goes back to a, a faulty foundation and a faulty structure. When I say that, I'm talking about the Nigerian constitution itself. Because uh, if the, the constitution is, the current constitution is thrown away and the constitution for the people and by the people is adopted that gives powers to the different regions and the state, you know, a lot of the issues Nigerians are experiencing right now will not be, you know, security, the issue of security, which I always believe is a, is a local issue, you know, because I believe security is bottom up, not top to bottom you know so security is bottom up so you have to have security at different levels from the local to the state to the federal you know so all of these are actual structural problems these are constitutional issues and the current politicians they are not willing to change the system and just for the one fact that they are actually immensely benefiting from the system as it is so you don't expect somebody that's benefiting from a flawed system to come change the system but that just shows that a lot of the politicians in Nigeria are not ready to do the right thing. They are not out to do the right thing. So um, at this point, I want to just uh, segue into this is why Nigerians need to be obedient. You know, for my international listeners don't know what I'm talking about. Obedient is the movement that is being spearheaded by the candidacy of Taobi, the Labour Party presidential candidate. You know, so Nigerians are actually solidly behind Kitaobi because uh, he has a, a solid plan of how to manage the resources of Nigeria and actually give Nigeria the desired change and development 
it needs in as little as four years. I truly believe him because I, I, I always say to myself that the problems of Nigeria are not difficult to, to solve. You just have to have the political will. And the problem is a lot of the political leadership in Nigeria right now do not have the political will. None of them are trying to change the system. You know, if the way we will have a new constitution right now going into the 2023 elections, you know, but yeah, we don't because the legislators refuse to do their jobs. They were just signing, signing documents, rubber stamping the presidency. That's what they were doing. You know, so they, they, they were not an independent legislature because if they were, they would have put the interest of the greater country at heart, you know, and do the needful. The needful right now is for the change of constitution in Nigeria. Nigeria seriously needs a constitution that is holistic, that will address the problems that we are facing, that will address the lack of accountability. That's the biggest problem. You see, somebody steals 80 billion naira and walks out scot-free and is out on bail enjoying that money. No assets have been seized, you know, no banks have been closed and those kind of things. Those accountability, those consequences are not there in the Nigerian system. That's why you see people are emboldened to continue stealing, to continue taking advantage of the people and breaking the trust of the people. Yo, people, this is the Perspectives on IMC TV podcast. This is your host, Prime Evil. I thank you once again for listening on our perspectives. Uh, listen to our perspectives on politics economic life in africa nigeria and the world in general yo thank you again and uh, stay tuned tomorrow for another perspective show this is your boy primeval one love